Today's video will feature a walkthrough of the IAE floor on day five. Welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today, we're going to do something different. We are going to go to the floor, but I'm going to make it quick today because it's RSI, one of my favorites. And the only way I'm really going to talk about them is to review the wonderful ships that they have that I own on Batgirl. And that will come after IAE. I apologize for that. My week is filled with lots of driving and lots of working. So we're going to do today a little bit differently. Instead of just going right to the showroom floor, we're going to make our way back from Port Tressler to New Babbage. And I always say, if you're going to make a trip, you might as well make money. So we take a hauling mission to fly down a bunch of boxes, and I get to show off how we get this done inside of a bigger ship. Not all ships are created the same now. I still love the way that you can load the exterior ships like the hull A, the hull C, and also an exterior ship, in my eyes, it falls into something like the Nomad. They seem to be the easiest ships to load and offload. This is a Cutlass, one of the easier interior cargo hold ships to load, and it does have its own tractor beam, but we're going to be using the handheld one here because most of y'all that are going to be starting off this game, that's what you're going to have. With Pyro multi-tool in hand, with the tractor beam attachment, we make little waste of time trying to get our ship loaded. Now, the larger the tractor beam, the faster you'll be able to load. So if you're looking at an upgrade down the road that you can put in your hangar, I would say the Atlas would be it. But there are two handheld tractor beams that you have to get through first, and this is the first one. We'll talk about the second one later on, but it's a medium size, and it is quite a bit more useful because it has a greater distance that it will engage. Now, this takes about five minutes. I'm not going to make you sit through it. I'm just going to get everything on the ship, and then we're going to get on our way. I take that back. It took the better part of seven or eight minutes to load this ship. Nonetheless, this is the last box. We're going to get in the ship. We're going to take off. Now, I, I have a lot of love for this ship. It's wearing the skin of the best in show from a number of years ago. I'm on Cosmic Cat. It's one of her favorite ships to use, and it's used for everything from hauling to box runs to bunker runs and also mining. Yes, you can't mine in this ship, but you could put something on it and bring it somewhere and mine, and that, of course, would be the rock. So with all our boxes in hand and ATC clearance about to be granted, we're on our way. Flying this ship is pretty amazing. It handles very well, has great armament, and is somewhat maneuverable, but it is a big ship. And it's easy to have different parts of your ship blown off by smart AI. Now, luckily, with desync and the current state of game, there's not a lot of smart AI out there. What you also just saw me do was rotate the engines. This does have VTOL. This ship is going to be great when flying in atmosphere becomes harder later on down the road. Ships that don't have VTOL will find it very difficult to hover with a lot of stress being put on their maneuvering jets. This ship can stay in a hover for a while, which if you have some of the versions with the guns on the sides, it gives you time to lay down covering fire while you're getting your friends ready to jump out and take whatever patch of land they're trying to capture. This is great in org versus org battles. It's great in jump town. And you see it a lot in the verse. It's one of the fan favorites and it has won the best in show quite a number of years, or at least competed in the best in show. As you see here with the purple best in show skin. 
With landing behind us and placing our last box on the freight elevator, we're able to go over, send our booty down into our warehouse where it will be accepted and it will close out our mission, giving us 13,000 credits just from going from Port Tressler down to New Babbage. Taking a look at the schedule, we see that we have a few big days coming up with Drake on Thanksgiving, Origin on Black Friday, and the Saturday after is Anvil Aerospace. We might see the Paladin that day. Today's floor is taken up by the Polaris, the first military capital ship in the game. You will not be able to buy these in-game. You will have to manufacture them, and we could talk about that at a later date. But I own one of these. Thank God. Thank you all for supporting my channel. The RSI Polaris is flanked by two relatively new ships, the Zeus Mark II. There's two variants here. I'm only going to walk through one. This is the ES. It's an exploration or extended range, or it's just a different version from the cargo version, which is on the other flank. It's a great ship. I think it's one of the best ships that RSI has put in the game in a while. We'll walk through it in just a little bit. We're going to walk around the outside of it and right inside. You'll see the smaller cargo hold. I think it holds just under 100 CU of cargo in here. You could fit a lot more and still get around, but the beauty of this ship is with new design language, you finally have two entrances into a ship. I always, always, always am critical of my Mercury Star Runner because it's supposed to be a data runner, and there's only one way on and one way off that ship, and it's through the cargo hold. I had Chris Roberts at my dinner table one day, and he said that they were going to rework it at some point, and that's never happened. That was two years ago, so I don't know if it's going to happen or not. These empty component slots are for new components that will be added in in later dates, and that's the other entrance and a typical RSI cockpit. It is just beautiful. Look at it. I love this ship. I don't fly it as often as I want to. Gun racks right where you are. So if you're boarded, your guns are right there. I think the design language of this ship, I think the usefulness of this ship is understated by many people. And it, people that fly it understand it within moments of getting into the cockpit. So I think you can pick up in my reviews that I'm not doing this for the seasoned Star Citizen veteran. You all been watching videos for years and have come to understand that what you see in a video one year might be completely different as there are many changes or additions to the Star Citizen gameplay. So I am gearing this towards people coming into the game and I am relentlessly trying to guide them towards starter ships, making money in the game, and buying up in the game to ships that they like. I will never tell you not to buy a ship that you really like to help support the game. But what I do say is you don't need to buy one of these expensive ships in order to enjoy the game. So we are going to go into the first hall over here. And of course, it is the Connie Hall. Constellation was the first larger ship in the game. It is one of the tried and true beauties of all ships in all hangars, in my opinion. The Scorpius is a heavy fighter that you may put inside of a Polaris if you purchase it. It's a multi-crew ship. If you have a partner to fly with you, this is excellent. This is Chris Roberts' X-Wing, and it looks like an X-Wing kind of sorta when you extend the wings. This first constellation is the Phoenix. It's beautiful from the outside, but in my opinion, it has the worst interior of any of the Connies. It is a poor design that comes from the ships being built before knowing what the components were going to take up and what the gameplay was going to be. It has a large area for a hot tub that's just useless. No galley, couple of cabins. It's just, in my estimation, beautiful exterior, kind of nice interior, and definitely in need of a redesign. Now, we don't have to say much more about the ship that's in front of us right now. That's the Andromeda. It's the base Connie, and this is the Taurus. So you have three Connies right here that are pretty amazing. And I am 
I, I, I don't know how to express all the fun I've had in this game, especially when you put your Lynx or your Ursa in the bottom, go find a new place on a planet and just go out for a ride. The center Connie over here is the one that I think I'm going to have in the end. And this one is the Aquila, and the Aquila is the exploration variant. Now, I don't need this in my hangar. I already have a 600i, which we'll talk about during Origin, and I'm going to have an Odyssey, and I have a Zeus ES. I have so many exploration ships, the 400i, they probably don't need it, but there's just something about it. This Scorpius is just something that will annoy you like a mantis will, and it has an EMP in it, and it could just stop you in your place and then take you out rather quickly. Now, with time to disable being something that's going to be big in the game, so we cut down on the deaths of ships, the deaths of players, that is going to be a good idea. So you can have a boarding ap action, steal a ship, a boarding ap action, and um, I guess subdue a bounty and then grab them and maybe a hawk would be with that Antares and put them in the back of it and bring them into face justice. All right, this haul is going to be fun because way, way, way back when in 2013, when the hangar went live, the Aurora was the first ship I get to go in. So we'll talk about those in a little bit. This is a Mantis. Put one of these in a Polaris. Utilize that giant EMP inside of it or the quantum QED, I think it's called. I really don't know what it is, but it's an interdictor, right? Keeps things from being able to go into quantum, whether it is nav mode or it's jumping between planets, jumping between moons, you're not going to be able to do it. And if you put it in a Polaris in order to stop it, you're going to have to kill the Polaris. Now, that is gameplay that's not intended. It is something that I'm sure will be changed. And this size ship was never meant to hold a capital ship in place. It's meant to hold ships of its size in place. So think of this more or less working with the advocacy or with small squadrons trying to take out Vandul and not with a Polaris trying to take out a kingship. It's a very lazy interior, if you ask me. They just left the space open, didn't use it for what it could be used. I'd love to go watch a morphologist review of the ship and see what he says. You have all this space, you might as well throw a couple of you know, boxes on it and carry some cargo, or you can better utilize that space by reworking the inside. Now, speaking of insides, the Aurora has an inside with a bed with no purpose, but who cares? It is the Eagle from Space 1999 inside of Star Citizen. Not as big, not as modular, but just as cool. This is a tiny ship that could pack a wallop for smaller bounty hunter missions. It's also the ship that I recommend that you purchase as a game package this year because it is a well-rounded ship that you can use in many different situations. Love the Aurora. I've kept my LX. The LX over here is the uh, Lexus of Auroras. It's, it does exactly the same thing. It has a cooler interior. That's about it. The LN, the Legionnaire, was introduced a little bit later than 2013. And the Legionnaire's whole duty is to be part of a local militia. It has a lot more weaponry, a bigger power plant. It's pretty amazing. The ES... Another base one. I don't care what they call them. They're all the same to me. You know, you have the LN that's one way and the LX that's another, right? So you have more weapons or a greater luxury. But when you go across the other ones, like the CL, greater cargo capacity, the MR, oh, there's dead people. And they have stuff. Oh, I'm going to take the helmet, but I don't need it. Um, I'll probably just drop it. Um, I, I don't understand. I, I think that... There are people that come here and decide that they're done and maybe they're on Virginia Point or uh, Everest Harbor or Area 18 or Severus, you know, anywhere else. And they come over here and they say, you know, I'm done. Let me go back to where I was. And they kill themselves and they're just wearing cheap undersuits and cheap helmets. But I have 
seen people die of asphy asphyxiation here wearing helmets, which is kind of weird. But with the helmet on, I don't feel that. And that's one of the reasons I put it on. I wanted to see if the bug was still here. So that's pretty much it for ships from RSI. You know, you would think that they have a lot more, and they do. And we're going to go see a few of them right now. All right, we've made it to the lower showroom floor, and we're going to start looking at the hollow viewers after I take a look at what I was wearing. This is going to be the Apollo. The Apollo has two versions of it, and they really are waiting on drone gameplay. Those people that have bought this for $260, I think it was, are still waiting for it. Now, I bought the Polaris back in 2016 and was just delivered it eight years later. I hope that isn't going to be the same for this, but we're coming close to it. This is the end-all, be-all small medical ships. They would be taking things to like a Galaxy and an Endeavor. They're going to have Tier 1 and Tier 2 beds, I believe, and be able to do both trauma and, uh, well, let's just say they're going to be a good, good ship. This is the Arastra. Arastra is a mining ship. I have one of these. I think it's going to be wonderful for that. I guess it's going to be like 6 to 10 people that will be able to mine on this, but it also refines from what I understand. And this I needed to buy because I'm really into industry all of a sudden when in the beginning it was all exploration and fighting. Oh my lord, it's the galaxy. The most controversial ship of Star Citizen, Citizen Con 2954. Many people bought this one because it was going to be a medium-sized base builder and then it was dropped that that's not what it's going to be. But what I think it's going to be, it's going to be better. It's a hospital ship. It's a cargo ship. It's a manufacturing ship. And while base building will be cool in the beginning, once your base is built, it's done. Manufacturing goes on forever. And I think this is going to be one of those ships that really takes the game to the next level. I'm hoping this comes in the next year or so or definitely with the launch of 1.0. Oh boy, what is this? This is the Perseus. This is a small gunboat. It has a very powerful gun. I believe it's more powerful than the twin guns on the Polaris because the Polaris is mostly a torpedo boat. But this is quite a bit smaller. I think it's six to eight players. And it is, I, I own one of these. This is going to be amazing. It's going to be really fun to fly. What we don't see here is the Orion, and the Orion is a mining platform. It is a huge vessel. It's relatively inexpensive right now, and I would say that if you have money to spend and mining is going to be your game, that ship is only going to get more and more expensive, especially in-game. It is something to think about and definitely watch Info Runners. Look them up to find out how you could CCU to it for almost half the price. Anyway, these are the Ursa and Lynx rovers. The two Ursa rovers are just general, uh, I would say, cargo and exploration on the first one. It could handle something inside of it, right? A couple of boxes. This middle one is brand new to me. I haven't seen it, but it has a tier three bed inside of it, I think. Yeah, I think it's the lowest end bed. And then this is the luxury, which... I own one of these, and I think it's cool. Uh, I think I'm going to pick up an Ursa Medical so I can put it in a couple of ships and have a respawn point. But you kind of have to ask yourself, like all this luxury stuff they have in the game, without there being any gameplay for it, what exactly is it going to do? All right. We're going to run in and out of these ships as I close out. IAE is the biggest event of the year for Star Citizen because... All the sales that they have generally gain them lots of money to keep up on the development of the game. Now, selling ships is not the only way that CIG intends on creating revenue in order to keep making the game. We're going to learn more about those different plans they have after 1.0 comes out. The Polaris I own. I am not going to waste your time going through it today, so what I will say is that I am definitely going to go through mine, fly it around with some friends, and do a video after the Thanksgiving holiday. My next week is absolutely nuts. I work in retail, and I'm working 10, and it's going to be 13 hours 
because I have an hour and a half drive in each direction, 13 hours every day. Doing the quick videos of the showroom floor is about all I'm going to be able to do. But it's not going to scare me away. And hopefully now, after a video every day for almost a week, you understand I am back. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, click the thumbs up button below. If you are a subscriber or a brand new subscriber, please click on that bell shaped icon and click on all to make sure you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.